Hello and welcome to jQuery for Designers. My name is Remy Sharp and in this screencast I'll be covering how to recreate the uh, Panix coder slider um, and hopefully go a little bit further as well. So the effect that I want to achieve is to have the, the sliding effect that you see on, on Panix website so the panels smoothly slide from one to the other. Uh, the navigation represents which panel you're, you're on but we're also going to have it so that if there's a link anywhere on the web page going to one of those panels it will also create the effect and also update the navigation and if you uh, you navigate directly to one of those panels i the url is uh, slash page html hash preview it will land on that preview panel and the navigation will again rep represent what panel you're on so I'm going to start off by showing you the, the HTML that I've got. So here's the HTML without the, the CSS applied. Um, simple UL at the top. And I've got divs here just with H tags um, and a bit of content. And right at the bottom, I've got a separate paragraph that links directly to some of this content. So if I just turn on the, uh, the style sheet, you'll be able to see what it looks like. So my navigation URL across the top again. I've got an overflow on this containing on this wrapping div. And down here is the paragraph where I can click on the links and you can see the overflow you know, jumping up and down. So let's have a look at the HTML that's behind this. So, I've just included the uh, the scripts I need. I'll come back to those in a minute. This is the 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 containing the the div that contains our navigation and our scroll scrolling element. We've marked up the the navigation just as we would any other kind of navigation. I've given it a class so I can target it later. This div will have will. Uh, will have a specific height and a specific width on it. So let's have a look at the CSS as well. So we're looking at div.scroll. So I've given it a height of 250, a width of 620, overflow auto. In this particular case I've used overflow uh, x hidden so that if the user comes to the page and there's no JavaScript there's a visual cue that it can still be scrolled and it will jump around rather than just clicking on it and um, or the user being presented with a bunch of links and not knowing what they what, what they should be able to do. Um, I've got my background effects here, and now normally, if you had this and you didn't have JavaScript, you w you probably wouldn't need this extra wrapping div here, in which our panels sit inside of. The reason why we've got it is because this is the actual uh, item that's going to be scrolled within this element when the, uh, the, effect, the effect is in place. So let me just show you a bit more of the, uh, the CSS. You can see all the CSS and the, uh, the HTML by just going to the website um, and there will be a link there to the, the example that we, we finish off with. So the, uh, the, a the actual panels within the scroll container have got a total height of 250, so height plus padding, which matches the height of our scroll and it has a width of 580 which is again minus the uh, minus the padding of our, our containing div if I just show you the the paragraph right down at the bottom this is outside of our our div with the uh, the scroll effects completely by itself there's no special classes on it all they do are refer to specific panel IDs which I've marked up here so that's why it works without the JavaScript turned on but we're going to use a plugin that allows us to have links anywhere on the website on the on the page and it will still create this effect so let's have a look at the the plugins we're using first off I'm using the latest jQuery then I'm using three plugins well these aren't really three plugins it's it's one plugin by um, Ariel Flesser and um, two plugins that sit on top of this, this scroll2 plugin. 
so serial scroll is what we're going to use to um, uh, allow the navigation to actually scroll up and down or left and right to these particular panels and local scroll is a plugin that will hook these links and have them trigger the event so now we need to create our own script So I'm creating this file as new, and I'm doing it externally because it's going to be quite a bit of um, of JavaScript, and, and really you should try and keep all your your scripts external, just as you have with your your CSS. So when the document is ready. We'll run our code. So the jobs that we have to achieve are one, create the scroll effect, scroll effect, two, uh, handle the selection of the navigation, three, add uh, left and right images, the so previous and next images. image buttons. So what I mean by this is that even though we don't have them here because they wouldn't be any good, I want to have buttons that I can click just here and just here to scroll left and right or up and down depending on you know what images you use. Um, and finally, as a little extra, I want to support vertical and horizontal. I'm going to start off by collecting the variables that I'm interested in. Dot panel. So you saw before, each of these panels, even though they've got IDs, I also have a class in them so I can target them directly. So this is the, the actual item that's going to have a, a full height and will scroll rather than the, uh, the the outer scroll element which will do the scrolling so uh, scroll container scroll and as I'm collecting this variable I'm actually going to set the uh, the overflow to hidden So just doing a bit of simple chaining, I've uh, I've now gotten rid of this scroll bar. So let's just give that a quick test. Yep. Okay, so I haven't actually got much at the moment, but um. Oh, sorry, that's privately scoped, isn't it? I'm just going to take this out of the private scope so I can just check that I've got it properly. Uh, yep, panels. There you go, good. So, cool. Right. Now I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do this in order, uh, just to make things even more confusing. I'm gonna add my uh, my my left and right buttons now because I know what they want to look like. If you look at the CSS, in in the CSS I've added um, these scroll buttons. So what I did is, I took the HTML. I actually added the buttons in beforehand, styled them the way I wanted to, and then took them out again, so that I knew I'd be applying these these left and right images using uh, JavaScript because I didn't want to be I didn't want them to be there when the page loads without JavaScript because they're no good to anyone. They don't do anything without JavaScript. So um, I've created these classes already, and I'm just going to literally whack them on either side of this um, of this scroll element. So, uh, scroll dot before source equals images scroll images class equals scroll. Uh, 
and I'm just going to do after as well. And let's have, give that a quick look. Okay, so they're in completely wrong place, but they've appeared. Um, excuse the fact they're so small, they are from the uh, the fan 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 icons, but they do the job for me at the moment. Um, I do recommend if you're going to if you're going to have left and right scroll icons, make them bigger so the user can see them. Um, I've probably got this class wrong, haven't I? Oh yeah, scroll buttons. There you go, cool. And I've also put a cursor pointer so it looks like it can be clicked, <coughs> but at the moment it doesn't do anything. Right, so those are ready to be hooked into our scroll effect. Um, I'm now going to handle the the navigation being clicked. So when I click on this, before I actually apply all the scrolling uh, sexy effects, what I'm going to do is, when I click on this, it will apply a uh, selected class. So if I add think I'll make anchor oops class equals selected you can see what how I've mocked it up basically. Seeing as it's nice well it's not nice but it looks fine. So um Slider dot navigation dot find well let's do a dot click and select nav. Now I'm calling this select nav because I know I need to reuse this later on. And the reason I need to reuse this is because when our scrolling effect finishes, I want it to call this function afterwards so it selects the correct navigation at the top and highlights it. So when I when I do click select nav the context of the function is, is bound to the element that's just been clicked so this is equal to the A link so if I just show you that You can see it's coming up in the console. This is the actual link that I've clicked on, and we're going to use that to we're going to use that to traverse the DOM, remove the selected class from the other links, and then reapply it back onto the one that we're interested in. So if we look at the DOM again for this particular link, what I need to do is go from here up to the UL, and then collect every one of the anchors again. Remove the, the the class selected, and then go back to our original one and put it back on. So it sounds a bit convoluted, but just bear with me. <laughs> so this dot parent, I said ul, and I want the first one. So this grabs us this particular ul. Dot find a. So it n now goes back down and searches for all the anchors within this UL. Dot, oops, remove class. Now I'm going to do dot end, so that resets back up to the UL. I do dot end again, so the selector resets back to this, and then dot add class. And that should be it. Let's refresh. Okay, so it's not quite it. We've got we've managed to select everything. So it's obviously not removing the class. So let's have a look at the um, find a. If I um, just comment out this code here to see what's going on.
but that, that's not going to tell us anything. Let's let's log us out to the console. Because chaining will just return all the selected items, I actually want to see it return all of the, the A elements. In fact, I spotted what I've done wrong, but I'll show you the result anyway. So it's not returning anything. And in fact, that's because I've used parent, not parents. So I'll quickly show you the uh, the API browser. <coughs> There's two functions, parent and parents. Uh, these two are the ones we're looking at. So they're functions, not selectors. Parent looks directly one element up. So when I was saying parent, I was actually getting this one, and because I was filtering by UL, it wasn't matching, so it was failing the selector. So this actually needs to be parents. And the, the thing about parents is it keeps looking up the DOM. So if there's a UL up here somewhere, it'll also select that. But I've narrowed it down by saying dot .first. So if I refresh and do it, show you the console.log, I've now got all the links. So let's get rid of our comment out. Fix the JavaScript error. Oops. Cool. There you go. So there's the removing of the select class and the the select class going back in. So now I'm going to apply the the effect. So I'm going to I'm apply the effect. I'm going to come back to. Um, selecting the correct navigation once the effect is finished. I'll, I'll, I'll come on to that once the actual effect is in place. So this is where I use um, Arial's plugin. I set, need to set up my options. And because I need to use the plugin uh, three times, I'm just going to set up the options once and pass them into to each of the three calls. And I'll explain each of the three calls as I'm doing it. So the target is scroll, which is the, the item that will hold all the elements and the scroll effect will take place. The items are dollar panels, panel, panel, panels. The reason we pass, I think the reason we pass in panel the items is so it can keep track of how many there are and what which one it's on, so that when we're clicking on these left and these previous and next buttons, um, it will correctly go forward one or back one and to the correct panel. I can specify the navigation. So these are the items that are actually clicked for the uh, to trigger the effect. Um, I should, yeah. So prev, this is the uh, the thing that's the the event that triggers the uh, the previous click, and because I've put these classes on here, I can target them specific uh, directly. I'm pretty certain that prev and next are, um, are absolute selectors, i.e. they uh, they run from the, the, the very root of the document, not from the element that you apply the plugin to. But it's fine because we've only got one instance of these um, image left and right buttons. Axis I'm going to do X and Y. Um, I spent a long time messing around with Axis and getting my X and Y is completely the wrong way around. Um, it's easier just to put both and then make sure that your your elements are either in one horizontal kind of hor uh, horizontal uh, vertically stacked or horizontally kind of aligned. Not so you don't have multiple on uh, uh, more than one row. So the example here is that. If we look at these elements, they are vertically stacked. Vertically stacked? Yes. So one on top of the other. If I wanted them horizontally stacked, I would use a float left, which I'm going to do later on. Duration of the effect. <coughs> Easing. Uh, I'm going to use swing, which is one of the ones that have 
it's built into uh, jQuery. You can use the uh, the EaseIn uh, plugin, which I've got a link to on the the website. Um, I'm just going to put this in as it is now, and come back to it. So I'm now going to apply this to the the slider object uh, elements. So this is the this is the div that contains everything: the UL, the um, the left and right buttons, and the actual scrolling object. And we're going to apply it with serial scroll and scroll options. I hope this works out of the bag. It didn't work. Oh. Oh, it did work. Right, the reason that didn't work is because of this bit, which I am going to fix. So let's just go to the default. Files. So there we've got a really nice, kind of smooth effect where we're scrolling up and down. And the left and right buttons work. Obviously, we're going up and down at the moment, but I'm going to show you a different effect for that as well. Now if I click on books, that doesn't create the effect. But that's because I haven't applied the plugin yet. Um, it's worth explaining at this point that this effect isn't being done using um, CSS. Maybe a couple of years ago the way to create this kind of effect would to, well maybe not, I don't know, but uh, the way I would have done it is to move the the top position have it absolutely positioned and, and move the top and animate it up and down. What this is doing is actually changing the um, the scroll, the actual uh, like this scroll bar here. It's changing the value of that. And if I show you the DOM attribute, uh, if I scroll to preview, see scroll top changes. That's how the effect's being being created and runs that smoothly, because it's it's moving this. So anyway, let's uh, let's get these links working so that these links create the effect. That's done with the local scroll. You saw us pull in early on. Same thing, just chuck in a scroll options. Let's get rid of this hash so we don't confuse things again. There you go. So now any link on the page is going to create this effect, um, but you'll see the navigation is still wrong. So let's now hook up. When I click on terminal, this panel is shown, and let's get this tab being highlighted. And the way I'm going to do that is on after and I call a trigger function. Uh, I've called it trigger. You can call it anything you want. Now some I think yes yeah, data is passed into this. So let me just bring up the console. So I've added on after. So once the uh, the effect is finished, it will trigger this function. So let's have a quick look inside of this. So that's told us what panel we've got. And I've got the ID of the panel, which also uh, I should be able to use to be able to find this link because the href ends with the ID. So let's go and do that. Right, var element equals slider dot navigation. And I'm going to find all the anchors whose href ends with so dollar equals means ends with and in quotes the id data.id that was passed in uh, well sorry you didn't see data.id 
uh, yeah, so the element the element's actually been passed in, and the element has an attribute of ID just here. So I'm just going to data.id. So now we should have our, our, our link that I'm interested in. Let's click on books here. Yeah, so if I show you, it's found the correct link. So remember we've made the select nav and we made the context based on the, the link we we're interested in. I'm now going to call this function and bind it to that element that I found. In fact, this is a jQuery object at the moment. Select nav dot call l and that's how I now say uh, bind this function to this element so that this the keyword this is the element that we found so we're on editor click on books and our navigation selects Right, to wrap up, uh, to wrap up to we've got a couple of problems to solve before we're finished. Just remove that. So if I go to preview, uh, sorry that didn't actually do what we want to do. I'm just pulling a, a fresh one so it's not out of the cache. You see preview selected here and none of our navigation is selected. Okay, and my guess, yeah, next didn't work. Next went from sites to files. So instead of going from preview to CSS, it, it went to the wrong place. So we're now going to fix that. And we're going to do that with um, by looking at the window, window.location.hash. So that's this part here. I'm going to try and use that to select the right navigation. So you see in our console we we grab the hash. So if I want the ID of the object, it's dot substring one. So now I've got the ID of the element which I'm going to use in a minute. So if window dot location dot hash If there's well, if there's a location, we're going to trigger the. Uh, well, in fact, we can just pass it into that, can't we? Trigger um, ID equals window dot location dot hash dot substring. So I'm calling this function up here, and I'm just creating this this quick anonymous object, or just an object, um, who has an attribute of an ID, which we're using here, and it should select our navigation. If there's no hash, I think you'll see that nothing is selected. So we want to actually select sites. And the way I'm going to do that is to find the first navigation item and just trigger a click. So there you go, that's selected. Let's uh, let's try preview. Cool. Um, go to previous next. It looks like it's all working. Uh, what? One last thing. Oh yeah, so we're currently going up and down. Let's make it go left and right. Stick a variable in here. Um, Hor 
press enter, press enter, press true. Let's stick it in here. If horizontal. So if it's horizontal, we actually need to kind of manipulate these um, these divs and make them all float left. So let's just do that. Panels. CSS. I'm also going to add a uh, position relative because I think it fixes an overflow problem in IE. I'm not 100% sure. I'm not the uh, CSS expert, but um, I've had trouble with it before where the overflow would appear, so I include that. So refresh. Let's have a look. Right, that didn't work, and the reason why that didn't work is because our scroll container is tall. Yeah, it's too tall. It needs to be wide. So it will scroll left and right. So container dot CSS width. And we're just going to take the first panel that we found. That should give us our correct width. In fact it hasn't, it's completely hidden everything. Let's have a quick let's get a fresh one out of the cache. Now. There you go, left and right. Let's have a look at what that bug was. Mm. Let's ignore that bug, shall we? Right, so that has given us a uh, uh, left and right. So, vertical, true, horizontal. That's everything. Um, you'll find this code and a complete write up of all the code on jQueryForDesigners.com. Uh, if you've got any questions or suggestions or uh, improvements, I'm sure the, the, if there's any uh, things that need a bit more explaining on the website, I'm happy to do so. Um, otherwise, I hope you uh, you learned something today. Thanks a lot.